This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we have a GE gas dryer, gallery dryer, that is not heating up. And I'm going to be fixing it. Pretty cool dryer. I'm going to use my paint scraper to loosen these two clips at the top. And then I can just hinge the top up and out of the way. And I'm noticing that it's spinning really well, but I'm not hearing the gas coils click in and I'm not feeling any heat on the vent tube. Usually it takes about maybe two or three minutes for it to heat up. I have it on time dry and really not getting any kind of a change or a response. So pretty sure it's the primary and secondary gas coils that need to be replaced. I'm going to check it out. So I'll unplug it. No power going to it. <clears throat> I'm going to take a Phillips head screwdriver and zip out this little piece at the top. It's a kind of a retaining piece that holds the tumbler in, into position. And then I'm going to take my knife and cut the zip tie off so I can remove this modular connector. That's bringing the power to the timer. And then I'm going to reach down about four inches down in the left hand side. I'm going to zip out a Phillips head screw that's holding in the, the front panel. It's about four or five inches down on the left. And I also have a small one on the right side too that I want to reach down and zip that out. And then I can actually take off the front panel pretty easily. This is a really cool, well designed, cool machine, easy to work on. And then I can get right to the primary and secondary gas coils, which are just electromagnets, but when they get weak, the um, machine won't let gas flow in. So I'm going to pull back real hard here at the top that lets go of these clips. And I lift off the clips at the bottom, and the whole front panel comes off. And then I have the blower wheel here, and the tumbler, and I have the gas assembly right in front of me. Really easy to get to. And there, those black things are the gas coils, primary and secondary. There's two of them. You can buy them pretty cheap online. And I'm going to pry off these modular power connectors that bring power to the solenoids or to the gas coils. And again, they're just electromagnets. Pry off the second one. And there's just two Phillips head screws holding the coils into position. I use this interesting tool here that changes the angle of the Phillips head screw so I can get into this tighter spot. You could use just a small Phillips head screwdriver would work too. Take out these two Phillips head screws. Now lift up on the plate that holds coils in position and I just pull them off the post. The fatter one is closer to you and the skinny one's further away. And this fatter one sometimes has a little metal ring in it. You want to put that metal ring from the old one back on the post before you install the new one. The new one won't come with a new metal ring. Here's the part number. Hope you can read it. It's made by Electrolux. <clears throat> they're really a common part they're just called primary and secondary gas coils and they're really the same ones are used on pretty much all gas dryers so you don't have to have an exact one so I put on the skinnier one and the bigger one facing me I put on a little bit differently I put it on where the, where the terminals are, are down at the bottom I put the holder back into position and then I'm going to put the two Phillips head screws that hold it in. It's interesting they have little um, plastic tabs on the gas coils that index them exactly in the right position so you really can't get it wrong. We're going to zip down those <coughs> screws with this angle tool. Get those tight and we're almost done. Then we're just going to put the uh, power connectors back on the modular connectors. Just take your time there. Make sure that they're going on nice and smooth and they're fully on f as far in as they can go. And while we have it open, we're going to do a continuity reading on the igniter. So this is the modular connector for the igniter, and I'm just going to stuff the probes in there. 
I have it set for continuity, and I'm going to look. If it says zero, then I know the igniter is bad, but it shows it does have continuity, so I know the igniter is good. There's the igniter right there. And it's just good to check why you have it open, because that's another reason you can get a no flame situation. So I'm cleaning the filter while I have it available, and I'm reaching down in where the filter sits and cleaning the shelf that it sits on. So the filter will be able to sit all the way down flush. Just using a long screwdriver to clean that shelf off. It has some, some lint in the way, pretty common. So get that sitting down there nice. You go ahead and put the front panel back on. So I put it on the bottom first. I hinge it in and I'm going to lift up on the tumbler a little bit so that it can sit on the felt front bearing that's part of the front panel. I'll push the front panel in till it clicks. I'm going to add those screws back in. You have a better view now of where that screw is. It's a small little Phillips head screw. It's holding in the left side of the front panel. Get that in with finger tension and then I'll tighten it up. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing here on the right side. Put it in with finger tension. Just take your time. It's a little awkward position. It's a really common problem that happens with this machine is that the gas coils wear out and then the machine will just won't heat very well and then eventually it'll stop heating. It's because it can't keep the uh, gas flowing. So I'm putting that connector back together. i got to remember to add a zip tie to hold it on the frame away from the tumbler. <clears throat> Go ahead and put this little retaining piece back in that helps keep the tumbler from falling out. It's not critical that you remove this, by the way, for this procedure. It's important if you're going to remove the tumbler. I'm going to do a continuity check, too, on this high limit that's hanging out right here, this yellow thing. And I, I can hear it beeping. I can see that it has a reading. So I know that that high limit is not blown. If that thing's blown, it won't heat up either. So we're all set. We're going to close it up and push down to where those click. Plug it back in, set it for time dry. There we go. <clears throat> Start it up. And it takes a little while, maybe about two or three minutes, but you should feel, you should hear it click. The gas coils click and feel the heat. So this worked really great. And we've got this dryer working like new again. So I hope that's been helpful to you and you get your dryer heating up again. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe when you get a chance.